this is AM Crypto. Alex is government name, but he's known as AM Crypto, has a big YouTube channel. He's a businessman, an adventurer as well. Yeah. A crazy guy who speaks four languages? Yes. Fuck, man. But I understand over 10. Come on. <laughs> what, Duolingo? Huh? Duolingo? No. How did you learn Self -taught. that? Self-taught. Self-taught? Yeah. I, I'm starting to feel, oh, maybe I've learned this recently, that there are just other people who are just good at languages. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm right? one of them. Right. They told me this in school when I learned French. So yeah. that was my third language. Yeah. So my teacher told me uh, my pronunciation is like a French guy. Oh, wow. You know? so, and when I was actually in France, and my French got really, really good. Mm. I really had people sometimes mistaken me for like a Canadian or like a Belgian guy. Right. So sometimes I, it happened once to me that even French people were thinking I'm French until mm. I showed them my German ID. Yeah. And even then I did not believe it. I said, it's a fake idea. I said, yeah. no, I'm for real. <laughs> so and then like after a while, they believed me. D do you feel German? No, not at all. Not at all? No. Okay. So I, I feel mu multicultural, but not multicultural. German. Multicultural. Yeah. That, that's interesting. You know, to me, that's what I've always felt. It's like I don't really have a place that are, you know, people have this thing of being like homesick or something. They feel like the yeah. home, it's a specific yeah. place. I don't have that. Yeah, same. I also I right? don't have that at all. Since when did, did that come to you? Just always? Uh, yeah, more or less always. So I don't know. When I was like, it started like when I was like 16, 17, something like this. Mm -hmm. So when I was away from home, didn't feel homesick. I was like, I can stay here, no problem. Yeah. So, you know, you can, they can drop you in some country you've never been before. You'll yeah. be able to make it home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it happened quite a lot of times. You know, it was mm. the same. And when I came to France, I forgot all my French. You mm. know, what I learned in school it was useless. Yes. You know, so, and then I realized after three weeks, they don't speak English, you know, so, and then I'm screwed by finding, a, to try to find a job where they speak yeah. English. And then I was like, shit, now I have to learn French, you know, so, and uh, yeah, after three months, I almost understood everybody mm. and everything. And three months after that, I was able to speak fluently. Right. So what's your, what's your story? So you were born in Germany. Yeah. And then at some point you moved to France and then I know you lived in Sweden and no, no, not in Sweden, in Ukraine. Oh, Ukraine. Yes. And then you, you now you live in Dubai. What's been, what's been your story? Like how did Alex start it? Was he just born like a Bitcoin millionaire? No, 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 yeah. not at all. So, uh, yeah, so I am um, a mechanical engineer. That's what mm -hmm. I studied for industrial machines. So I know how to build them and also how to draw them. Mm -hmm. So the, make, and like the blueprints and everything, you know, yeah. so I, I know how to draw this shit. So and um, yeah, when I was already before I knew about Bitcoin, before I did this, because mm -hmm. I found it in 2010, on like a torrent website where you can download movies, you know, so, they, pay, yeah. Yeah, so there was like an, uh, a banner about Bitcoin that said uh, Bitcoin future of money, something like this. And I was yeah. like, what is a Bitcoin? So I clicked on it and um, it redirected me to the white paper. And then I read about it and I, and I was like, that sounds like a Ponzi, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, but it seems like I'm early, you know, it's yeah. just like a couple of months around and nobody talks about it, you know? So I might be really early on, you know? So then I tried to uh, mine it with the mining client that I could download. And I had a really, really uh, powerful computer, a gaming computer, that, like top notch what you can buy. I had it in this computer. Hmm. So, and um, yeah, I tried to mine it then, but it did not synchronize to 100%. And then I gave up after a couple of weeks when it did not 100% synchronize. was like stuck at 99 something. And mm -hmm. Da Vinci actually explained me what was wrong, but last year, so right. way too late. So, and um, yeah, then I gave up. Three, days la three years later, I see Bitcoin again hitting $100. And when I saw it, it was like just a dollar. I was like, fuck my life. I, 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 missed, I missed like, uh, yeah, I messed up. I missed a hundred X, you know, it's a hundred dollars. It's still there. So then I was like, okay, let me try again. So then I tried with a laptop and I did not know that I need a miner already. So again, same story, a couple of weeks. Then, then I was actually done with Bitcoin. And I was mm. like, this is a scam somehow. You know, it doesn't work. I don't get my hands on a Bitcoin, you know. So and then um, two years later, I had a roommate. He was exchanging all sorts of currencies, online currencies, like uh, uh, Liberty Reserve, um, Perfect Money, you cash um, and then there was a paysafe card litecoin ethereum and also bitcoin and when he said to me bitcoin i said 
go away with that shit. It did not work for me. And he's like, mm -hmm. why did it not work? I said, yeah, I wanted a wallet and to want to mine it. I said, give me your iPhone. A wallet, you know, a wallet's like two minutes. So and then I had my first wallet. Then I bought through him my first Bitcoins. And then um, on an exchange, and I started to exchange myself because he did not want to give me the website where he did it because right. he, he knew me. I would put him out of business. So, and um, yeah, then I started exchanging in Germany for a while until I realized that I'm with one foot always in jail because the regulations were so flu there yes. that uh, when you were buying drugs with the Bitcoins that I sold you, yes. I would go to jail, oh, yeah. not you. You know, you know? Ch Charlie Schramm in the US went to jail for the same yes. similar thing. Yes. Yeah. So, and that was then the reason why I decided to move uh, back to France. I lived there before already for like two years. So I decided to move back. And because there it was different. If I sell it and I can prove it and yeah. it's yours, it's your problem, not mine right. anymore. Right. So and that was then the reason why I moved there. And then after six months, I was bigger than um, any company that was established in Paris um, with exchanging. There was wow. like a subsidy from Ledger. I had like an exchange office. I, after six months, I was bigger than them without having a physical office and just like having meetings in like co coffee shops or McDonald's and stuff like that. Right. So and um, yeah, I moved then to Ukraine when I started my own crypto project in Paris, which then failed. And with the rest of the money that I had left, I moved then to Ukraine and started professionally trading. L let's not go yeah. to, to Ukraine first. OK, because okay. I like when you taught me yesterday about that i was like yeah. oh wow that's a very interesting story of yeah. how it was very tactical yeah. you know so you say that you had the business in paris yeah. we, by the way this is the beauty of europe of like the trade region where you, you can easily move around you were yeah. in germany you just moved to france yeah exactly right? i could have gone to any european any country european and country. settled there no problem absolutely it's a beauty so you realize that okay the business is failing but i have the last amount of my money the yeah. last point. So I'm not going to burn it in the business anymore. Yeah. I'll move to a cheaper place yeah. where I can afford to live for longer yeah, exactly. while I figure out what I need to yeah. do. Yeah. You just moved it into a different part of Europe where well, Ukraine is Europe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> kind of. <laughs> a kind of Europe. And then that's where you made it. Uh, you, you made things happen. Yeah. There, right? Yeah. So uh, first of all, the business itself, like my uh, exchange uh, business was not failing. It, so I, okay. I was creating a, my own crypto project and okay. that failed because I, oh. I started in a bear market. Your own coin. Then. Yes, yes. So and the other problem was I did not have the network that I have today, you know, right. so I did, did not know the right people uh, to raise enough funds. So mm -hmm. and when I was almost running out of funds and I had only 5000 euros left at the time, that was the moment when I decided, OK, I go to Ukraine. But I had a, because I had a girlfriend already there and was every weekend in Ukraine. I knew uh, how cheap it is to live there and how long I can last with five thousand uh, dollars euros there. So that was the reason why I moved there. It was actually not because of my girlfriend. It was because I knew how long I can last there <laughs> with that money. Okay, so they say that when you get, you know, Bitcoin makes you wife changing money or girlfriend changing money. I'm sure when you made the money. I'm sure that girlfriend is no longer your girlfriend anymore, is she? Uh, already when I moved there, uh, like it was like. Six weeks later, she mm. wasn't my girlfriend anymore. Oh, wow. After yeah. the, after he started killing it? No, no. Uh, <laughs> so the problem was that uh, Ukraine was already um, having the war in the Donbass region. Right. So and she was working for a military hospital while she was studying to become um, uh, a surgeon in the hospital. So and uh, she um, told me one weekend she's going for a wedding mm. with her family and i was like can i come she's like no my dad is coming and her dad did not know that we were together only the rest of the family like sister mother they knew mm -hmm. but not the dad so she said we cannot tell him until we're gonna marry so i said okay so she said no my dad is coming so you cannot come with me to the wedding so i said okay no problem was nothing unusual so but then i wrote her like the next day because i did not hear anything did not hear anything from her a couple hours later so i wrote the next day hey how's the wedding going and no answer mm. and i'm waiting one day two days nothing oh. happening so i'm texting again you know no answer i'm calling no answer and i'm like okay something is up you know so and after like one or two weeks i was like okay that's it she just left and i don't know why and then um on christmas actually i wrote her um, I was hesitating and then I wrote her, I had already a new girlfriend, so, but I wrote her, said I had Merry Christmas and then she explained me that she was deployed to go into the war zone. So, wow. and um, she was afraid if she would tell me that uh, she might not go. 
Right. You know, so and she really needed to go to finish her studies. Yes. You know, so and that's as so I said, it's stupid. You know, so mm. uh, I would I would have let you go. You know, so it would have been not a problem because I understand. You know, and then she was like, "Fuck." Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's Ukraine. Yeah. You have so many options there. Yes, yes. I right. had a I'm lot of. Sure, options. I'm sure it wasn't a problem. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. So, but yeah. So, uh, but I started already before we broke up. Is there? It's it started to pick up already. So I yeah. made then already in my first couple of weeks. I made already like five figures like low five figures mm. so but it was getting better doing you know? what exactly uh, trading trading okay. yes so and then um yeah after 10 months that i was in ukraine i turned this 5000 uh, euro into 2.2 million wow yeah so and i rested i stayed then in ukraine just uh, out of comfort you know, is, is this like a, was it rtc like just purely technical trading that was technical trading okay technical so trading, I, I, nice. I completely stopped um exchanging in, in ukraine it was also not really um Profitable because uh, the fees are so low there. Right. So the commission is so low. It's like one. To, uh, I'm, sometimes I was exchanged for more, even minus. So I got oh. more. You know. Okay. So it was really, really low. And if you did not do really high volume, it was not really. It wasn't uh, worth it. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't worth it at all. Okay. So man, you seem like you always had uh, this adventure, go all in, and just be a, a freaking wild monster. Just walk around the world. You know, this region, this region. You never felt like. Uh, you never felt like, oh, you know, now this is done. The business is not got the coin projects kind of failing. I need to now get back home. No, no. So it was direct France, direct to to Ukraine. What, what does your family think about you then? Uh, what did they think? So the they they did not understand at all how I was making money. Mm -hmm. You know. So and my dad only realized that uh, this year when I gifted him his dream car with uh, his um, American Idol in it. Mm. So uh, I flew uh, like a world famous drummer from the US over right. to Germany delivering the car. Wow. So and only then uh, he finally got it. You okay. know? He, he, he was like, OK, my son must be well off yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> if he can afford to do that. You know, was, OK. And that, that was also the moment where he decided to invest in crypto and oh. bought some Ethereum. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Before I told him like 2016, 2017, 2018, all the time, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin, just a thousand dollars by buy Bitcoin. Then when uh, Bitcoin was 70K, I told him if you were uh, no, even before that, mm. um, I think I can't remember what amount Bitcoin was, but I told him if you would have invested a thousand dollars when I told you, you would have now a hundred K. Yes. He was like, it's fine because he did not believe it. Right. So now he believes it. <laughs> Damn, man, that's that's cr I mean, what I like about that is is that everybody buys their parents' cars. It's like the, the cliche thing. But you you went the extra mile and say, no, I'm going to get your, your best drummer, your favorite drummer to deliver the car with you. Um, how what was that process to hit to hit this guy up? Just like, hey. I'm, I'm a rich guy and I just want to buy my dad's a car and you to deliver it? No, it, uh, yeah, it was kind of like that, you know. <laughs> so, I, um, so first of all, it was hard for me to get in touch with him because, you know, if he is world famous, he gets yes. like everyday crazy messages, you right. know. So and I was like, okay, how, how can I reach him? I wrote, wrote him on Instagram. After a week, he did not see it. So then, then I checked if he's on Cameo, mm. you know, because then he's really oh, seeing yeah. the message. Yeah. So and then I uh, paid like, I don't know, $20, $50 to send him a message. And I only said, hey, please check your Instagram. Right. This is my handle, you know. And then he read the long text that I sent him. Mm -hmm. So and then, um, that, then, then he was like, oh, that's such a nice idea, but also uh, like a strange request. I never got something yeah. like this, you know. So I have to think about it, you know. So but, um, but then he said, yeah, I have to discuss with my wife and everything. And then um, a couple of days later, he came back and he said, also, yeah, I don't know if I'm touring and also if, I, if everything is happening according as it should be mm -hmm. and Corona is not interfering, then I'm actually touring at the, at the States. But if I should be not touring, then, I, then I'm down. Yeah. So and um, yeah, after I check with my wife, you know, so here you see. So he's like oh, the no. text that I, that yeah. I sent to him, you know, and then, then he was like, hey, you know, and he was seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, okay, it's like strange request, blah, 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 you know. So, and then he was like, okay, how we do this with the payment? You know, yes. do you send me something up front? You right. know, is it cash, blah, blah, blah. I need security. How can I know that you're not going to kidnap, uh, me. kidnap me, yeah. you know, so and all that stuff. See, so. Oh, lovely, man. Yeah. This is insane. Yeah. That, that's like a. I'm, I'm sure oh. your dad went bonkers after that. Like, yeah. Okay. Oh, I did not even yeah, you see. You didn't even follow him. Yeah. So, I did not, I did not, did not see that he started following me. So, of course, I have to follow back, mm. you know. 
Yeah. So he is awesome. Yeah, he's I like, really I like nice this guy. kind of stories, yeah. man. It's like going the extra mile. And I think a lot of people want to be successful right now. Yeah. Especially the crypto guys. Yeah, of course. They want to be successful, but most of them I feel like they're still limited to like to their location where they're born and where they live when sometimes the opportunities are elsewhere. Yeah. You know, they just feel like, oh, because I was born here, this is how where I have to make it. It's like, man, come on, you have to go where it works. Yeah. You know where it makes sense. Yeah. At what point did you decide to uh to move to Dubai? Um so it was actually because of a little bit of corona and I was uh, sick of being stuck in Ukraine, you know, mm -hmm. so because everything was closed, you know, so and then you could not travel, so and after 9 months I was fed up with it with that, you know, so and I was like and but all the other countries were also closed, you know, so I was like I cannot even go somewhere even if I want to, you know. Mm -hmm. I was not like in in prison in Ukraine. I was in prison because I could not go to other countries, yes. you know. So and then um Dubai was all the time open, you know. So and I was like, oh, I don't want don't want to go to Dubai. I was at 2018 in August was so hot, you know. Mm. Dubai not interesting. So and then I went actually to the Maldives and I had then to stay like a couple of hours in the airport in Dubai. And wanted actually to go out, but because of the uh, restrictions, I could yes. not. Because then I need to make a new test, you know, yeah. and wait 48 hours. Oh. So that, because of that, I did not went outside. But when I came back, I had uh, 16 hours overlay. So I had enough time to get like an express test. So and then I stayed in Skyview and um, went a little bit like outside, went to the mall, a little bit shopping and everything. And I was like, hmm. It's nice. See, it's nice. Not so bad here, you yeah. know. So and in December it was winter, you know. So for them it was cold. For me it was still fine, you know. Mm -hmm. So I went out with shirt and everything. I was like, that's actually quite nice, you know. So maybe I should come again. Yeah. So that was like end of uh, December, just before Christmas, like a day before Christmas. So and then I went back, and then like two months later, also another friend of mine went to Dubai. So and uh, we were literally an hour difference with the planes, you mm -hmm. know. So he was like, hey. Bo bro what are you doing i'm like on my way to dubai he's like me too when are you landing i'm like in an hour he's like no way i'm, I'm arriving in two hours yeah. <laughs> so i was like okay let's hang out you know so and he was also living in kiev so that's why it was really funny so and um yeah then i spent like two and a half weeks so and said yeah that's really nice you know if you have money it's really nice here yeah. so i rented the lumbo started uh, to to go uh, and do a lot of shopping and then um then i came again for like almost two months and then again for a couple of weeks and then I decided to because I had then so many connections already in Dubai and was uh, um, getting such a big network mm -hmm. that I said okay fuck Ukraine you know there's anything nothing happening you know so it's boring there I'd rather be here yeah. you know so and that's when I made the decision to go to Dubai and now it's like one and a half years already especially that you know Dubai what I like about it is the onboarding that they have. yeah look they not gonna ask you crazy things to get a visa it's yeah literally straight it's a clear straightforward process yeah a B C D yes it's it's, it's like it. it's like get a company and get your visa <laughs> exactly. that, that's it yeah whereas if you if you try you're European so you wouldn't understand yeah. this but for me to apply for a European visa, I know I oh, know man I know they want to dig into my history, my birth everything. certificates, everything. Yeah, it's I like, know. Come on, man. You know, nobody ain't got, and nobody got time for that. You know, <laughs> um, get another passport. I have connections. Yeah, yeah. Uh, through which countries? Uh, you can have Mexico, Grenada, San Kitts, a bunch of countries. So, but the fastest one is Mexico, okay. and Mexico also is also faster? also the cheapest. What? How much is Mexico? Sixty uh, k. Sixty thousand dollars. Yes, and three weeks. Within three weeks, you have it. And they wow. deliver it to your doorstep. Which one is better between St. Kitts and Mexico? Uh, St. Kitts. So, Kitts. But, but the, 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 the one which is actually even better is Grenada. Grenada. Yeah, okay. because with Grenada, you have a 10 years American visa. Oh, oh so yeah. automatically? Automatically. You can go to America for yes, 10 years. 10 right? years. So ah, and this is man. like 170, 180K and takes six to seven months. Okay. So, but so, the, the fastest one is Mexico, 60k three weeks. But if you're living in Dubai, I think you can wait a good six to seven months. Yes, right? yes, of course. Yeah. of course. Wow. You know, the, the thing is, I want to get a, a new passport, yeah. but the more I dig deep into it, I still find more and more information. I'm like, okay, I should probably look into all the options and decide. But I didn't know about Grenada. Nobody ever mentioned it at all. Yeah. So, Grenada is a colony of, of the US? It's just next to St. Kitts. Okay. So it's also a former British colony, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, 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 you have the same uh, benefits that you have with the Sun Kids, just yeah. so you have some other countries on top. 
mm. that the St. Kitts doesn't have. Roger Ver is the one who told me about St. Kitts. Yeah. You know, because he has it. And yeah, he yeah loves I know. It as like I know. So, but trust me, Grenada, Grenada is better. Okay. Um, man, uh, it, these are problems that a lot of you guys in the US and in, in Europe, you probably won't understand as much. The passport problems, okay? Um, how would you explain the lifestyle in Ukraine for someone who is a single guy like me? If I move and start living there, I mean, remove the war first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the lifestyle and the culture like there? Oh, so how was it for you? So, uh, let me put it this way: If you make like five thousand dollars a month, yeah, you you live like a king. Five thousand dollars a month is enough. So I, I pay <laughs> I pay I pay a thousand dollars for for my apartment. It's mm -hmm. not super fancy, you know. Chris, Car, Da Vinci, they were all my apartment, you know. And compared to Dubai, mm -hmm. they said they d would not even let uh, their dog live in my apartment, you know. <laughs> so even if it's a nice apartment, you know, it's not bad, you yeah. know. So it's like high, like high German uh, middle class standard, where right. uh, that kind of style, you know. So for and for Ukraine, for me, that's fine. Even though I'm also moving when I go back to Ukraine, mm -hmm. I'm gonna move to a little bit higher up place, right. you know. So, so you so, still have plans of going back to Ukraine? Yes, You definitely. love it that much? Yeah, it's nice. So the, the food is amazing, the people are super nice in Kiev, um, the, the parties are nice, we have beach clubs, you mm -hmm. know, so for the summer. So um, the, yeah, I uh, really like it there. So for, for snowboarding, you go like to the Capuchin Mountains, mm -hmm. uh, to a place called Bukavel. That's, that's like, uh, like the French Alps or like uh, Ischgl in, uh, in Switzerland for uh, the high society, but for the eastern part of Europe. You know? So Bukavel is also, if you compare it to the French Alps, it's like three times cheaper. Wow. And do you have, um, so obviously you'd prefer Ukraine over Paris even? No. No, Paris is better. Yeah, Paris is better. Why would you? Why did you say that? Because I lived there over seven years. Okay. In Paris, so I like uh, Paris over everything. So Paris is my favorite city to live in, actually. What makes it? Uh, what makes it? What makes Paris a, a better option? Um, also, the the people when you speak French, okay. you know, so oh. they're super nice. But you need to speak Just French. French. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that and there's every, every like every moment you can do something. You know, I can go out like at five in the morning and and I and I can do something. You know, and and a lot of other cities in the world you cannot you cannot do this. You know, the mm. other only other place in the world where you can do this is uh, maybe Tokyo. You Tokyo, know? yeah. So I mean uh, Dubai as well. Dubai is it's getting complicated at 5 a.m. You know, so yeah. In, yeah, in Paris it's not not complicated. There are a lot of after parties, you know. So um, a lot, of, uh, most of the places are 24/7 open, you know. So it's that, that's what's so amazing about Paris, you know. So then also, the, uh, like I said, people, also the food, you know, clubs, um, yeah. And you have actually the feeling when you are in Paris, it's a little bit similar to Dubai, that you all the time um, want to do something. You know, you, oh, yeah. you, you cannot really rest because you're like, oh, I have to do this, I have to go there, you yeah. know, so in Paris it's kind of the same. I will tell you the, uh, the, the story of when I went to Dubai for the first time. Yeah. I went there for conferences and then I stayed and I was waking up at nine to attend meetings, um, to go to a conference and at six-ish there's dinner and after dinner there's a party and then after party there's an after party that for two weeks, I did not sleep for more than four hours. Yeah, I, I, it reached to a point where I was like, I had to leave uh, Dubai to just fly to London for three days, just so that I can sleep, rest, chill, yeah. and come back. That's, that was my first attempt. I was like, okay, the next time I go there, I would take it a little bit more easier. For you, when you moved to Dubai for the first time, what were, how did you grasp all that craziness that happens because it's not normal you know? yeah of course it's not normal you know so it's not normal so when 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 i got there i actually was thinking that i can do the same what i did in ukraine you know yeah. so i in ukraine normally i'm just in work mode you know i don't go really out that much you mm -hmm. know i go to ukraine to work so and um because it's a good place also to focus and i was thinking okay in dubai i can do the same you know so i i arrived to dubai first couple of days i'm like at home working and i'm like mm, i actually would like to go out a little bit and here's some crypto events uh, i might just gonna show up there you know mm -hmm. so i go there i make some connections get, get invited to like dinners to uh, to after parties and then some other meetings you know and then uh, then i actually was more out of my apartment than actually working you know i was like shit you know i i need to work but i don't have time you yeah. know i'm all the time somewhere but not at home to work you know 
So yeah, that's that's how it was when uh, when I came to Dubai the first time. How, how did you make sense of the the the, the culture, like um, everything from how big everything is, the dating life, yeah. and business there, the, the dynamic. For me, it was a little bit weird. I remember I went to a party. Somebody invited me to some party, and I went in there, and I entered the room. And 30 minutes later, I was like, wow, all the girls here like me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then suddenly, and so they were all taking my numbers and stuff. And then someone, may, and a few of them messaged me. And just after like two exchanges, she's like, oh, so when do you want to go? And the next message was like, oh, $3,000. So yeah. I realized, that, oh, <laughs> all these yeah. girls are pretty much selling. Yeah. How did you make sense of all that culture in Dubai? Uh, so I figured it out quite quickly on okay. uh, on Tinder, you right. know, so because there were a lot of them. Oh, that, that on Tinder, I saw it quickly because yeah. like the phone numbers yes, everywhere. Yes, so and um, so if, yeah, I, I kind of have an eye for that, you know, because you have that same, the same kind of girls also in Ukraine, mm -hmm. you know, so and I can s spot this quite quickly, you know, ah. because I'm so into Ukrainian and Russian girls, right. you know, so that I, that I can tell easily if, if they were going to ask me for money or not, yes. you know. So and if I talk with them like five minutes and I have like the feeling they only talk with me because they want to get uh, some, money. some money, you know, then I'm like, okay, bye. Okay. You know, so, or I ask them straightforward, you know, so do you expect a gift later, you know, and then <laughs> if they're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, 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 yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. like gift, you oh, know, so, gift. yeah, yeah, so, and uh, if they expect a gift, then I say, sorry, there's no gift tonight. <laughs> what, what's the difference between Ukrainian and Russian women, you think? Um, so, if you want, like, a relationship, mm. m so I, you, you cannot uh, stereotype them, you know, you so cannot but, generalize but, but from, from, from my, my uh, experience, you know, so when you get into a relationship with a Ukrainian girl, they're mm. super, super jealous. They need a lot of attention, you know, even though you have to work, they, mm. they, they don't give a fuck, you know, <laughs> you have to, if they're with you, they need attention, you right. know, so and... Um, and also like small presence here and there, but that's also with the Russians, but they are more easygoing about it, you mm. know? So, and um, then with Russian girls, they're way more open-minded. They are, most of them, they are not as jealous as the Ukrainians. So, and um, they're in general more open. They are, they are more uh, like a free spirit, you more know? Free so, spirit. Yes, so, and in, uh, in Ukraine, it's, it's different. So I'm not saying these girls don't exist there, mm -hmm. but um, I did not met a lot of them there. Right. So, and uh, that, but I, that's also due to that in Ukraine, uh, there are more women than men. Mm -hmm. So they're always in competition with each other. Uh, how would, do, do you compare that, these dynamics to yeah. like a French woman? Um, they, are, they are more independent French women. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I know like the Ukrainian and Russian vibe is like if you're the man, yeah, you're the provider. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. So there in the French girls are also like that, you know, so but they are still a little bit more independent. Okay. Dope man. It seems like you have you have lived life. Yeah. You have lived multiple lifetimes for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now when you started your or your businesses and uh, and stuff to the point that you have gotten now. What do you think? What did you say is the biggest lesson that you have learned when it comes to making it? Um, that it doesn't matter how many times you fail, as mm -hmm. long as you still believe that you can make it. Right. So because I was seven times on the street, you yeah. know. So now I live in the most uh, in one of the most expensive uh, resident buildings in uh, in, Dubai. In, uh, in Dubai. Yeah. And would you say there's this hot talk about some other people believe that success is some kind of a is luck? It's not luck. So yeah. there is actually a formula for luck. I have to look it up again what it exactly is, but mm -hmm. there is a mathematical formula what luck actually means. Mm -hmm. You know, so there is like the luck that people think does exist, mm -hmm. it is not actually luck. So it's like a, a series of events lining up to the point to, oh. that it actually happens, you know, so to put it in simple words, you know, so and they call it then luck, you know, so, but so it's you, actually so not So to luck. increase the outcome of that luck, you probably yeah. have to increase a certain number of events, activities yes, yes, on, the, on one yes. end, yeah? Okay, and what, have been, what has been your inspiration, you think, like in terms of people, uh, mentors, or like figures that you have? Uh, definitely Elon Musk. Yeah. Um, also... Um, How many kids do you have? 
I have zero kids yet. So you're not a, a real follower of Elon no, Musk. No, <laughs> not recently. <laughs> not recently. So yeah. um, and then uh, also Jeff Bezos. Yeah. So Jeff Bezos. Uh, so I read something really funny. What what he does with employees. Mm -hmm. So he sends um, a random employee an email, like a genuine email, yeah. only with question marks. Imagine you you get you get like an email from Jeff Bezos right. only Just with question marks. marks. It, it freaks you out. It's yeah. like, what the fuck did I do? You know. Yeah. So why does he send me only question marks? You know, that was really funny. So he just yeah. wanted to see how you're gonna react to that. Uh, yeah, no, it just he wanted to to uh, to have fun and mess with people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so when he was bored, he was doing this. How how would you say? So what do you think makes um, Jeff Bezos special to Elon uh, to Elon Musk? Um, Both are special in their own ways, yeah. but I would say, like, if you look at qualitatively, yeah, uh, in Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, yeah. what makes Jeff a better person in some aspect? Uh, I don't think that there is like an aspect where you can say one is better than the other. No, I'm saying that both of them, you're yeah, definitely yeah. gonna find aspects that are ah, uh, yeah. yeah, 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 like so, Ronaldo and Messi, they're all yeah. the best, but then yeah. you have different attributes. Yeah, so. Um, Jeff, there, he he built Amazon, you know. Mm. So and nobody believed that he can build it. Everybody said it was absolutely nonsense that he mm -hmm. wanted to build something like this. So and he still went through with it, you know. You can say the same about Bill Gates, you know. So there also uh, the people told him nobody needs a computer at home, yes. you know. So and then he still did it. So and uh, the same with a um, little bit similar with Elon Musk, but it was a little bit different, you know. Yeah. So when he built PayPal, you know, so. Um, there the internet did already exist so people had like an understanding so and um, the only thing was uh, that they said uh, that banking online would be not the thing yeah. you know so but he also still made this right so in terms of um um people like elon musk jeff bezos do you think that these guys like they're extremely wealthy people yeah. Do you think they are like extremely smarter than the norm, or it's no. an element of luck? No, it's also no element of luck. Okay. So they were just laser focused on what they want to achieve. Right. So and uh, and then the money just comes by its own. Mm -hmm. And and for you as well, do you think do you think anyone can set out a goal? Oh, like how do you set your goals? Do you are you like a sniper type of person who like I want to make ten million this year? And you try to achieve for that, or you kind of free flow and see what happens. No, so um, I, I I have I have goals. Mm -hmm. So and I have also like uh, a vision board at yeah. home. It's like in every corner, you know. So no matter where I go, I see it, you know. Mm -hmm. So and um, that has to do with visualization and the law of attraction because mm -hmm. this really works, you know. Huh. So I kinda, that reminds me of Carl. Already. Yeah. So <laughs> so you it really works, you know. So uh, guys, you should read up about the law of attraction and read some books about it. Mm -hmm. It really works, you know. So and um, I did it in the past, like selectively, subconsciously. Yeah. So and that led to things that later happened where I was thinking it was luck, and then I really dig deep into the law of attraction. And I understood mm -hmm. okay, it was not luck. It was just that I did not do it. Uh, that I did not use the law of attraction on purpose, yes. like willingly. You know, I did it subconsciously, and that's why these things happened. You know, so and um, and now I I do it on purpose. So and I focus more on it. So and um, the moment where I did start uh, using it like on purpose three weeks later I got so much business uh, I, I could not even keep up with it you can know? you give me an example of what this looks like um, uh, so for uh, everybody can do it a little bit differently you mm -hmm. know so there are like affirmations you know so where um, where uh, so different affirmations so you you can look them up you know mm -hmm. so there are different kind of affirmations you have to find yours that's working for you you mm -hmm. know so then um, then there is um, like a gratitude that uh, um, that you have to practice, you know, so where, where you say, okay, I'm thankful for this and this and that, you know, and uh, then for different things, you do that like for a minute, you know, you can also do it just in your in your head, you know, uh, but it works actually better if you speak it out, mm -hmm. you know, so and um, the same with the with the affirmations um, or that you write them down. So that's what I do. I write them down every morning, you know, so different kinds of affirmations. So to mix them up a little bit. And then also your goals, you know, so I write them down, uh, my daily goals, my monthly goals, my long term goals, where I don't really have like a set time when I want to achieve them, but I want to achieve them. 
So, and that's also uh, represented in my vision board that I have, you know. So, there are things on it that I want, for example, by end of the year or early next year. But there are also things on, uh, on it which are maybe five years away. So, when you say affirmations, it means you're sitting in a room and say, I want $20 million, $20 million in the middle of the night? Something like this. <laughs> Okay. Right? okay. But, but, you, but, 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 but you don't say I want, you know, okay. so you have to convince yourself that you have already. You have a, okay. So what? Is, okay. So you're sitting in a room and you tell your partner that, okay, I'll be back. And you go in the second room and just say, okay, $20 million. I got $20 million at the end of this year. Yeah. No, not end of the year. You, you have to pretend like you have it already. Have it already. So, ah. it, so it must feel like you must convince your mind that you actually have, have it already. It. You know? Right. So that's how that's it works. That's a game changer. Yes. So so and when when your mind is convinced that you have it already, you yeah. know, then it will also will come to you. Are you religious in any way? No, not at all. Okay. It's interesting because I'm also not religious. Yeah. So much, but well, not at all. But so I find it difficult to to implement this kind of concept yeah. in my life because it yeah. feels like the same wound. I also know? I also had an issue with that <laughs> <laughs> like the first two weeks. So but when I, when I saw the results already after two weeks, I was yeah. like, "Fuck! I'm never gonna stop with this anymore." Yeah, and I I, I give you an example. I made yeah. 1.2 million in in three weeks. Right after I when implemented this, no in a trade deal. No, it was advisory deals. Advisory deal, yeah. I, uh, so I put out there, I want advisory deals. Mm. I got five advisory deals. I took two. Oh, wow. 1.2 million made. Yeah. Ching -ching. Three weeks. Nice, man. That's fantastic. Yeah. You, you guys, you need to check that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what, have, what did you say that is, you know, people look at you, they're like, Alex is a wealthy guy, successful. In Dubai, you, you cannot even go into KFC because everybody knows you there. Yeah, yeah, kind of. You know. I, I get stopped here and then. Exactly. And uh, what, what would you say has been, what, what's the biggest challenge you have ever faced in your life? My biggest challenge? Mm. Um, I think it, it was that I, that I had the money actually to afford an apartment, you know, mm. when I had my failed project. And uh, instead, I was living in my office and okay. sleeping there on the couch for like wow. five months with my dog. Because you didn't have the money? I had to choose. Either oh. I pay for the office or and can apartment. network in the office because yes. it was like a, a co uh, co-working office, mm. you know, so co-working space. So I had to choose. Either I try to network and try to find people that are be interested to help me with my project, mm. or I rent an apartment, and then I. Uh, then it's more complicated, you know, mm -hmm. to find people, you know. So in, in a co-working space, you have a lot so of people. people. Yeah. yeah. So and I was in the biggest one in Paris, you know, at WeWork. Mm. So and um, yeah, then I choose that over an apartment. So and I had like a storage. There was like all my sh shit that I did not need. And I had like um, one bag with me. Uh, there was always an office with clothes to change. Mm. And then like every two days, I wash them like in a wash salon, in a wash saloon. And... Um, yeah, and that's how I was living for like five months. So, so what if, if, I, if I needed to shower in the beginning, I was going to like, um, like, like, like an indoor swimming place, you know, took their shower. Or probably the gym? Uh, no, no gym. So I, I had no time for gym. I was oh, so wow. busy, I really had no time. So I, I made it barely in the morning to like this indoor swimming and went there for a shower and then went back to the office, you know. So and um, then later I had a second office and there I could use a proper shower and so also properly So what sleep. happens if you're staying there and you went to the club and pick up a girl you stay at the office i couldn't okay i couldn't <laughs> so, so i at that time i still my girlfriend in ukraine so mm. i was every weekend going to ukraine uh, yeah and i had there then like a holiday apartment that i meet at all the time from the same company so i got like nice rate you know so i always stayed there so you know what's crazy about this is that any any time i talk to an entrepreneur who's successful yeah right they have this kind of stories of like risk pretty much they have an extreme, like you know, on every um, spectrum, they'll go to one extreme to get something done. Yeah. Whereas if I talk to normal people, there's always have a need for comfort. They want to be comfortable all the time. But yeah, you need a home, you need a place to live. It's always about that you need this, you need this, you need this. You need a place to call home. Oh, you cannot survive without this and that. But like, you listen to people like you, like it's either you stay in the office or they live in their car for a few yeah. months, whatever. Where do you think this coming from? Do you think people have a different 
levels of desire like some also, others wanted yes. more than others yes so it's 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 uh, the level of desire but it has also a lot of uh, to do with your mindset yeah. you know so if you don't have the right mindset of course you cannot live like five months in your office you know you yes. go crazy you're oh, like yeah. no fuck that yeah, you know it I, make sense. yeah I, I get uh, like a regular job and I have my tiny apartment and I'm happy again yes. you know so but that was for me not an option yes because I, I saw the potential in crypto and I was like no I, I, I want to make money you know I don't want to work for anybody anymore what, what does it mean to because you know others are watching now you're talking about owning your own business some i think sometimes people think it's that complicated right like what does it mean to own a business really it's it's not complicated right? you, you can do with anything start yeah. a business you know so if if you're like a barista you can you can make like a mobile coffee shop you yeah. know so where, where you park your uh, your your coffee truck in front of like an office building with 500 people in there you know on the, uh, in their breaking time or when yeah. they come in, in the morning you know so that then you sell their 300 coffees you know 300 that's 300 dollars so that that uh, cost you maybe like 30 dollars so you you make in the morning 270 dollars you yeah. know so when you sell them for a dollar you know so you, you uh, there's so many opportunities how you can make a business you know so but it's finding actually uh, the ability to spot mm. um, where people uh, need something mm -hmm. like, you know so where where is the demand for something so if you have that possibility you know so um, that feature that you can spot where uh, other, uh, other people see a lack of demand right. you know so and you can tap in this you know you can uh, do with anything a business all of it and i think if you're an entrepreneur naturally you see these things everywhere yes. right yes. i went to a laundromat yesterday yeah. to get my stuff washed and i saw that it's so expensive imagine yeah. for a small i don't even know how many kgs of like i had to pay a hundred dollars because what? here it, it, here this in nigeria lagos they say that oh it would take one week for you to get this back if you want to get them tomorrow you have to pay double so it ended ah. up about 800 bucks yeah. roughly so immediately i was like oh if i was here that's exactly what i would do i would literally just buy a bunch of machines set up a laundry and then you know yes. there's a perfect uh product market fit yes so and, uh, and i would uh, dump the market i would make it so cheap so, so cheap yeah, exactly that, that i that the people would be lining up outside to <laughs> exactly. to, to do uh, their laundry yeah and nobody else would compete at that point yeah. So how are you building right now? Because one of the challenges that I'm, I'm looking at, I'm trying to build as much as I can, but I'm looking at the mixture of like remote work. It's cool, but it also have limitations. I don't know if you're, how, how are you dealing with that? Like where there are certain things that you think that could be done better if people were sitting in an office. Yeah. Together. And then also, but at the same time, remote work gives you like a huge pool of talent because it doesn't matter where. Yeah. But you need somehow to bring them together how are you so that in I, i'm actually doing this right now in dubai mm -hmm. so i bring my people that are working for me now together to right. dubai so and then i just have an office manager you know who is now my assistant mm -hmm. you know my personal assistant will be then the office manager when i'm not there mm -hmm. i trust him 100 percent. so i can still do what i want to do you know because i i can leave him with the with the office mm -hmm. you know so it doesn't really um disturb me you know to have then people physically in dubai and yeah. i have to be like the boss and i have to show right. up every day in right. office no i don't have to you know so of course i i want to spend most of the time with my employees mm. you know when i'm in dubai but um i can also say tomorrow i i fly to the seychelles or yeah. back to thailand or to bali you know and stay there for two weeks and i know my office will be still running how would you so do you see all, all your projects or you kind of for every project you hire a team and you let them run Mm. But they are also in, uh, sometimes intertwined. Yes. You know? So I have sometimes um, also multiple projects, but I have um, the same core team on these projects for different things. Yeah. Awesome, man. It's like a an amount of craziness to balance creating content, running companies, <laughs> yes. being famous. It must yes. be. And you you you're probably traveling at least once a month, right? Yeah, more or less more or less right now yes it's like more or less every month it's less right now i would say because during yes. the, the bull market yeah there it was crazy <laughs> so uh, there i was uh, with chris in so many places what are the crazy stories that you have uh for ibiza uh sorry for what ibiza what is ah, ibiza. Yeah, ibiza. ibiza 
Um, I cannot tell you the craziest story, so I, I can tell partially the crazy yeah. story. So right. Chris and me, uh, um, so Chris and I'm crypto. We we had a really big villa in Ibiza, mm. so and uh, we were invited to a party, and we were thinking about to go there. So and then we saw it's like 25 minutes away from us. So we mm. were already too sleepy. So and we s decided uh, to think about it, and then maybe we're gonna go or not. So and then we were laying on the couch. So and I had here the same watch. So and so when I go to sleep, I take it off and mm -hmm. I put it on top of the couch. Yes. You know? How so much? How much did this watch cost? By the so way, I don't know shit about watch. Yeah. So this is like uh, 29k. But if you want the same watch now, it's like uh, 38. 48k. 30, 38. 38. Yes. Okay. So oh, that's why they say the prices of the watches yes, go up. Yeah. Yes. They appreciate in value. Yes. Okay. So um. So and then I then I went to bed. Uh, so then I fell asleep on the couch. Mm -hmm. So when I woke up, um, I thought I took the watch and went to my room, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And Chris was still sleeping there. So and I wake up at eight in the morning. Chris is gone upstairs in his room. Uh, I look for my watch. I cannot find my watch because I wanted to go to the gym. And outside, I see on the on the sun pad that was outside on the terrace that uh, Chris his small um, bag that he has, you know, so mm. that uh, this was completely emptied out. So and uh, the money that was in there was also gone. So and I was thinking, okay, uh, I think yesterday was full moon, so I think maybe he was so sleepy and emptied the uh, the, the bag to get the crystals out to uh, recharge them with like the moonlight, and he took the cash and went upstairs. Right. You know. So I put everything back in the bag. You know, I put it in a bowl next to the door. Went to the gym. So and then um, I get a call from other friends that were with us. Mm. Uh, just when I left the gym, so I was just at the car, you know, wanted want to start the engine, and then my friend is uh, screaming at me. Oh, Chris is screaming at the at the maid, you know, said she stole money. Is absolutely, mm. absolutely going crazy. And so and then I uh, understood immediately what happened because mm. uh, she was not there when I woke up, you know. So she came later. Right. So and uh, then I said, no, no, no uh, calm Chris down. You know, I'm coming. I know what happened. Tell him yeah. I know what happened. It was not the maid. I'm coming. Okay. So and then uh, then I arrived there. So and then she, the maid was screaming, you know. So I hugged her. She said, "Oh, I'm working here 15 years. I never stole like one one euro. You know, I right. never stole something. You know." I said, "No, I know, I know." So and then Chris was still going crazy. So I said, "No, shut uh, shut the fuck up. You know." So I know what happened. And he's like, "Okay, what happened?" You know. So I said, somebody was in here. You know, oh, so yeah. my watch is also missing. I did not check uh, everything else that was lying around in the living room, but uh, my watch, at least my watch is missing. Yeah. Then I realized my uh, Versace sunglasses were missing, so and his cash was missing. So and then, then I said, Chris, here was somebody inside. We need to check the CCTV, but I yeah. promise you it was not the maid. She was not here when I came. Right. When I woke up, I was the one who put everything back into your back and put it at, in the bowl. You yeah. know, it was not her, it was me, right. you know. So and then, then it was like okay okay let's check the tape and I say I say fucking sorry to the mate you know right. it wasn't her you know he, and it's like oh okay sorry sorry and she yeah. was still crying you know so then the owner came and uh, only she was allowed to see the tapes you know we were not allowed we tried but they did not let us and then she said uh, yeah that's what I exactly want you about so we were in a restaurant somewhere. And there were people seeing our watches and right. they saw how much cash we were taking out to pay. Oh. So especially Chris, you know, because it was like 10K. Yeah. So and then they followed us. So and at that night they got super lucky because we left the terrace door that wide open. You know, oh. so that oh, went open. Shit. So and then uh, they came in when Chris was still sleeping. So and they stole from him that far away also from his nose. So Chris is also not the uh, not not the lightest guy, yeah, you know. So yeah. if he would have woken up, you know, would've we would we yeah. would have drowned these people in the pool, right. you know, literally. Yeah. So we'd have really really drowned them there. So they got super lucky that he did not wake up, you know. So and um, yeah. So and then my watch was gone. So and when I realized it's gone, I went to Rolex, uh, blacklisted the watch, mm. and reordered the same watch immediately. Okay. So did did they do anything about it? Did they, did they report it found? Um, so it will be reported found once uh, one of the victims that bought right. the watch is going to Rolex right. for maintenance. Okay. Then, then they they will hold back the watch. They will call me. They will call the police. I can then take the watch, you know. Mm. So, but this person has to explain how he got the watch. Oh yeah, for sure. So, but it will be a victim, you know. It will be not one of the guys who stole yeah, it, yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. it has already changed then five times. It would also the owner. be a victim. Him, you're yeah, just going to be yeah. like another guy. Yeah, oh, so, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so I, I have then to tell him, hey, buddy, you got scammed, <laughs> you know. But this is fucking my watch. My watch, you yeah. Know? <laughs> so, 
I Ibiza is that uh, is that dangerous also? Yeah, it's not this. It's not the safest yeah, place like, in the world. Yeah, like 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 uh, with home invasions, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is like a big thing um, there. They normally they are not that crazy that they come inside when you are mm -hmm. sleeping. You mm -hmm. know, they normally wait when you are gone or something, and you yeah. left a window open or something. You know, so but uh, yeah, they they were crazy. Yeah, my friend, um, they they store his uh, his laptop there. Yeah, and he's like a big crypto de degenerate. Yeah, you know, who has like he's managing money. Yeah, uh, big. He runs big pools, you know, sort of liquidity mining. Yeah, left his laptop in the uh, in the apartment that he rented, and he went partying. Came back, door was cracked in. They yeah. took the laptop. So you can imagine with all the two affairs that you have, man, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, you, did you had any? But other than that, in your travels, you ever come across anything crazy, right? Other than shit getting stolen um you ever had problems with law enforcement no no that's no good. so um i um i no i did not really had a, had a problem so i, I got stopped once from uh, police in france because mm. we were at a birthday party and everybody was super drunk so and it was like in a small village so mm. and i started like at 2 30 in the morning to uh, to drum on like uh, trash cans on yeah. plastic ones so it was yeah. like super loud when they're empty you know then some neighbors called the police and then um, some of the guys, they had weed with them. And um, I saw like 200 meters away from me, the police, mm. you know, so and, and um, then I stopped this. And then uh, then they stopped us, you know, so and uh, and I told my friend, hey, get rid of your weed before they stopped us. You know, he's like, no, no, we'll be fine. But you, he said to me, shut up, you know, I'm like, OK. So and then they start asking me questions and they're, they're like, why did you do this? Yeah. You know, so and um, what did I what, what did I tell them again? Uh, so because I was super drunk, I'm like, um, ah yeah, I, I'm like, I don't know, I'm German. <laughs> you know? so they're like, what? To what? You know? So and, and and then I like, can we see ID? So yeah, no problem. I gave them my my ID. They they're like, okay, just stop doing it. So I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm I'm going home. You yeah. Know? So they're like, but you're okay. So because they if you if they think you're too drunk, you yes. know, they actually take you. For, oh. for the night, you know, so so I don't know. No, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so they're like, okay, we go five meters away. I'm like, just fucking idiots, blah, 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 like shouting like this. My friend, hey, shut the fuck up. I still have the weed in, the, in my pocket, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, stop it, you know. But um, other than that, I didn't have really problems. A, a lot of people ask me because I travel a lot, I don't, I don't have a home base anymore. Yeah. They ask, oh, are you ever gonna settle down? I'm like, I don't know. I don't even think about it. Do you see yourself settling down at yeah. some point? Yeah, definitely. What would that look like for you? So um, I'm actually looking already for a place in Paris. Mm -hmm. So the problem is that kind of place that I want is really, really um, unique. Mm. Uh, I would say, you know, really specific what I want in that place. So and I am sure I will search for like another year until I find this place. So yeah. I want a really specific uh, cut in the apartment and everything and um, that's why it's so hard to get because either too expensive because they're asking too much yes. or they just really don't want to Wanna sell, sell it, yeah. you know yeah. so and that's that's my issue you know so I, I have actually to hope that some of the owners are dying you know and that yeah. the kids actually want to sell yeah. you know um, because usually you know those kind of fancy homes they're owned by old money yeah you know, exactly yeah. no or, or like they are like just by uh, like a long line traditionally in already in the family and they oh, just yeah. appreciate it in value over time right you know? right 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 so what what would that look like like you're just gonna be based everything in uh in france and all that no i would still travel around but mm. then uh, instead of uh, spending most of the time in dubai i would mm. spend most of the time in paris what does that work how does that work out in taxes that's uh, the companies are still in Dubai and oh, in companies. other countries, so yeah. they can they can not tax only, me on they anything. They probably can only tax you because they, they even cannot tax me because I have a European passport. As long as I don't have a company or start working in Paris, mm. I don't have a tax ID. Oh, so okay. as long as you don't have a tax ID, they don't even know that you exist in the country. Right, right. Kind of. It depends because some of them they have like if you, for example, in the UK, if you spend hundred and. 80 days, I believe, yeah. in there, then, yeah, yeah, then you qualify yeah, yeah, yeah. as a taxpayer. Yes. So, but 
there's an easy way to get around this. Mm. You just uh, you're just not 180 days in a like row in, in the, the country. Oh yeah, yeah, for no? sure. So, and I'm never 180 days in, in a row in, in a place. country. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So because 180 days is pretty much half a year. Yes. So I never stay half a year like in one place. So mm. I always move to another country, especially now with all these conferences. You know, so I'm at least every second month somewhere else. You yes. know, so yeah, try to text me that way. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, do you have anything you would want to talk about before we close? Nothing in spe no, nothing specific. Nothing specific, no. yeah? Yeah, but thanks, man, for stopping by. Yeah, I think sure. it's a special episode yeah. in an iconic place in the world, in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we did some speaking at the events. People loved it. Um, did you expect Nigeria to be like this? Actually, yes. Yeah? Yeah, because um, like couple years back when I was working for another company mm. in crypto they had like 90% of people from Africa mm. as members and they have 60,000 members so like over 40,000 are from Africa mm -hmm. so and then I looked up places you know where, where they were coming from so and then I watched some documentaries um, so it was what I kind of expected. So I, I was not uh, having like a culture shock okay, like Carl right. and the others. <laughs> <laughs> like Carl, Carl and Da Vinci. Yes, like yes. Da Vinci expected to see lions and safari. Yeah, elephants. Yeah. He's really Everything. disappointed. Yes, you know, he's like, yes. where are my lions, man? Yes. You know? uh, okay. Cool, bro. Well, so if you, uh, yeah, just tell people where they can find you. Obviously, yeah. some of them already know. Yeah, yeah. So on YouTube, it's uh, AM Crypto. And on Twitter, it's AM Crypto Alex. And on Instagram, it's Crypto Two Underlines Alex. And that's my only twi uh, Instagram profile. There's over 400,000 followers. And every other profile is fake. I don't have a backup. I don't have a private account. This is my only account. Okay. What do, what do, what do Germans think about you and Chris? I have no idea, <laughs> I, uh, but I know what the German government thinks about me. Right. When they when they get once to know how much I have, they're like, oh, "Oh, this guy can never give his passport to us," yes. you know. So we will not uh, let him. Uh, uh, how is uh, renounce the citizenship? You yes. know. So when so they, they have to treat you nice. Yes. Eh? So if if they know how much I have, they never let me renounce because they will soon introduce. Uh, that you get taxed no matter where you are, like in the US and Canada oh. and Australia. Shit. So once once they know how much I have, mm. they'll never let me renounce. Oh, yeah. The US is crazy about that yeah. stuff. Like the only people who have done it successfully are like Roger. They yeah. did it before Bitcoin was super but, huge. But they can still renounce, you know, they can still renounce. But in Germany, you have now to make an application mm. uh, for renouncement, you know, mm. so and they can deny to renounce. You know, because in a couple of years, this tax is coming, yes. you know. So, and what you're going to do if they deny you, you know, so you're, you're screwed. The U.S. You know? is kind of the same because I but, know someone but, who's no, going through the process. Yeah, I, uh, my, my friend also went through the process mm. and uh, there is no real application that they can deny for renouncing. Okay. It's only the only thing that they can say is, OK, you want to leave, but 50 percent of, of your net worth yes. we keep when you leave. <laughs> You know, so that is what they can do. But in Germany, it's different. It's like, no, we keep uh, you. We take everything. Uh, we you can keep your net worth, but right. we tax you on every dime that you have. Oh, so what are you gonna do, man? That's uh, so the only f way around this is uh, if you have companies, you know, so and you have your wealth stored in these companies. In these companies, yeah. So and not and nothing to your personal name, you know. Right. So then then you are fine. Okay. So, but yeah, it's also a headache. You know, you always have to pay attention. You know, uh, that nothing is in your name, always in the company's name. You know, so I mean, uh, if if these guys really want to come for you, they, they they sort of. If you are the citizen, yeah, they'll kind of try to find a way to make money. Out yeah, of, yeah, like, yeah. They're not gonna if they if you become a billionaire yeah. tomorrow, they know. Okay, Bitcoin millionaire. Yeah. I mean, Bitcoin billionaire. Yeah, German guy, Alex. Yeah. They're like, okay, let's get some of that money. Yeah, of course. <laughs> They'll find their way. They're like, <laughs> we, we will get our 50%. Exactly. You know? Right, right. Yeah. They'll be like, okay, look, you can become a St. Kitts citizen if you want. Just want our 50% yeah. out here. Yeah. You know? No, not going to happen. That's why I renounce as fast as I can right now and get another passport. And then I say, okay, ciao, bye bye. Which one would you get? Like the the, 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 the Mexican one because it's the fastest one because okay. it's three weeks. Okay. Mexican, $60,000, 60, three, three weeks. weeks. Yes. What's the tax regime? In t in, do you know the tax uh, regime? It's like uh, five percent, but it doesn't matter because I'm not in, living there. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it doesn't okay. matter. Okay, you, I might just become a Mexican citizen <laughs> yeah. soon. You know, <laughs> so Grenada, you said about over 150k. Yeah, it takes about six months, but yeah. you get your, it, you get ten years in the US. Yes, beautiful. Yes, yes. that is my so, favorite. And part. it is actually better for traveling than the German one. 
Okay. Because oh. we have more countries visa free. Right, 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 right. So you got pretty much you had the whole Europe, US, yes, all that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Man, you know, do you know how? Have you ever traveled with someone who is from like South America or from Africa? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so South America. Yeah. Yes. Friend of mine. And also, sometimes you probably travel with uh, Russian girls. Yeah. You know how complicated it can be. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. To get the visa to go, yeah, especially every, your guys, Russians. Especially Russians, yes. exactly. So especially having, right now, it's oh, really yeah, hard. Yeah, it's <laughs> even worse now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you guys just decide. Oh, let's go to Ibiza this weekend. Oh yeah, yeah. let's go. You fly over there. It, it was last year, even with Ukrainians, a problem. You know, Chris and me, we mm. we invited some friends mm -hmm. from Ukraine and from Russia. You yeah. know, so and we had to make them land with a pri so only with private jet we could get them there so yes. we sent only a jet for them right. to, to come so and they had to touch down for five minutes in slovenia so mm. that they could say the plane was coming from slovenia, slovenia. Uh -huh. that they get into ibiza you uh -huh. know into spain you right. know also because from ukraine at the time with corona they were not allowed to go to spain so we yeah. had to touch down for five minutes so they, they basically land and took off again and then yeah. they could say we come from Slovenia you know which was then Europe and then it's fine before we close you jumped into another area that most people want to know about private jets yeah. how how does that world work like oh how fast can you decide to let to go to another city or another country within an hour within an hour yeah okay so they get uh, Chris and me we, we organized one time a jet in like two hours we were mm -hmm. like okay we want to go can we, uh, and then we want to go as fast as possible and we got the jet within two hours Wow. Payment settled, everything, go. Okay. And do you have to um, do you have to put in any deposits or anything like that? What are they? You, you pay the whole flight up front. Okay. And the insu do, uh, uh, that covers insurance uh, as everything. well? Everything. Everything. Okay. Nice. I think if you have gone into that, I'm sure you'd, you definitely would have ideas of getting your own jet because the amount I'm gonna of... I'm going to get my own jet. <laughs> bro, the amount of bullshit it cuts away if you yeah. fly private is just enormous, yes. right? It's like... No standing at the fucking airport, people screaming yes. and all that shit. Yes. And the, the other thing is I have a nice deal with um, a private jet company already. Yeah. So when I get my own jet, they guarantee me 50% occupation a month because I'm chartering it out. Right. So and um, only $4,000 to put it in a hangar per month, which is also nothing. That's nothing, yeah. So it's really cheap, you know. So and uh, if you imagine now... If somebody takes a jet, it's at least like 20K. From mm. the 20K, you get at least like 10, 12, mm. you know? So, and that then, it, it's like at least 150K that I get guaranteed per month, mm. you know? So, if you buy a jet for like 15 million, it's like 100 months, it's like eight years, and the jet is paid off. And you still use it yourself, yeah. you know? The jet still ap appreciates because of inflation. Yeah. So, you can sell it after three, four years, you know? So, and you almost um, did not make a loss on it mm -hmm. you know so on average uh, you in 10 years you could make your money back if yeah. you have a good company to manage it, yes right? yes so and you have like now so the jet should be also not too old you yeah. know so you should have like a jet that's not older than like three four years yeah because like then it's 15 years old you know and then you want to upgrade to a newer one you know so because you know private it's all about luxury and people want to fly in the best or like the most affordable but luxury jet they can afford to yes okay exactly. cool alex thanks for being on the show man yeah, appreciate no it yeah uh, this is a, has been an incredible episode uh you guys will find it on youtube some clips on instagram TikTok, man wherever you you, you can watch on tv even you know <laughs> <laughs> wherever so thanks for watching remember to subscribe yes. it's a survival skills podcast some clips will also be available uh, on Crypto Hustle on my YouTube channel. And yeah, destroy the subscribe button below. And links to Alex's content as well is also in the description. Peace yes. out. See you. Cheers.